everybody. Welcome. Aaron Blaze here to our first Friday stream, June 2nd. Happy, happy June. Hello. The year everybody. is flying by. Yeah, there's Nick over there. Hi, everybody. Dustin's over there. So uh, today, uh, I thought it'd be, uh, Nick and I were talking about what we're going to do today. And, you know, we've been having such a great time uh, creating Snow Bear. And uh, as many of you know or don't know, um, over on our website, if you become a member, we've got this really cool new feature that we've done where um, you have exclusive access to sit with me twice a week while I make Snow Bear. And it's been, what it's been doing is it's creating, uh, first of all, we're creating a really nice community. Every, every Tuesday and Thursday we get together and, and it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, but I'm also teaching what I know, you know, when it comes to animation. And, uh, and as I'm making it, I'm explaining what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it and all that sort of thing. And it's basically kind of taken all my 35 years of experience in the animation industry and and I'm trying to kind of hand it out while I'm making this this short. And so um, we thought it'd be fun. You know, we want to we want to continue to build that community. And so I thought I'd sit down and do a few more drawings today on Snow Bear. I'm finishing up a shot uh, with the gang. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to kind of finish up these last few drawings today uh, with you guys and see if we can't bring more over and be part of the community and, and, uh, and join, you know, become a member over at Creature Art Teacher. And not only are you going to you know, be able to hang out with us and twice a week, but you're going to have access to over 600 hours of animation and art uh, uh, education. Uh, quite a few different instructors, not just myself, but a lot of my friends that I've had that I've worked with over the last 35, 40 years in the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a lot of great stuff there. And also, whenever we do our... Uh, about four times a year, three times, three or four times a year, we do a big live event, and uh, and you'll and if you're a member, those are, are all part of the membership as well. So it's a pretty good deal. But uh, do we have any sales going on? We got sales going on. Yeah, don't we? actually, speaking of memberships, um, if you like what you see today and you want to become a member over creatureartteacher.com, uh, memberships right now are actually the lowest price ever. We did this sale for Memorial Day weekend. It's hundred and twenty dollars off an annual membership right now. Whoa, which, whoa, whoa! Wait a which minute. Gets you access to, as Aaron said, nearly seven hundred hours of art and animation lessons. Plus, it gets you thousands of brushes, um, live events, exclusive workshops, which we've got one coming up. We've got a little information on that. Uh, so, if you go on over to creatureartteacher.com and check it out, uh, not only do you get <clears throat> all those courses, all that content, but you're also going to get access to, as Aaron mentioned, twice a week, our exclusive Snow Bear uh, live streams, which are going to be sort of like what you see today, only a lot more of it, a lot more in depth. We're taking you through the full process of animation from start to finish, all the way through pre-production, all the way through sound, music, the whole number. Scoring, the whole deal. Yeah, it's going to be, you're going to basically just you know, see how we make it all the way up to release. So it'll be cool. And I think we're going to try to do something special when we get it done with everybody Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, was that it? Did That's it for now. Yeah, we'll cover get everything? Right here. Let's dive in. We'll... All right, cool. Well, for those of you that have been hanging with me, obviously you know what we're doing today. But for those of you that are new and, and haven't joined us on a live stream before, this is Snow Bear. This is a, uh, an animated short that uh, Nick and I have been working on for the last several years. And I've been working on it in earnest from storyboarding to animation in the la for the last year and a half. It's a 10 minute short. It's about a polar bear living in the Arctic. Hey bird, he it's me. <laughs> it's about a polar bear living in the Arctic very, and he's lonely and he's trying to find a friend. He can't find a friend. And so he makes a snow bear and the snow bear becomes his companion. And so this is a little shot right here where he's molding snow bear into uh, him making hide and seek. Now, for those of you that don't know the animation process, Right now I'm doing the drawings, and so he's not painted yet, so you're going to see through him. But if I play this, you'll see he's, oh, he's got his eyes, his hands over his eyes, and he's checking to make sure he's not peeking. And then our, our polar bear runs off to hide, goes over the hill, then he pokes his head out over on the left side, goes back. So that's our little gag there. So what I need to do, everything else has in-betweens, meaning it's nice and smooth action, as you can see. Everything's moving along nicely. But there's a few drawings there at the end where he pokes his head out where uh, I want him to, I want to smooth out that action. See, he just kind of po pops out. So we got we to gotta put some in-betweens in there. So let me show you the context of all of this. So let me go to Premiere. This is my editing software. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Just bring it back. 
let's take it to the section where he gets the idea. He sees this snow drift, and he gets an idea. Let me turn off the score. Someone on Twitch says, nice, this is giving me a little bit of Brother Bear vibes. Well, there's a reason for that. I directed Brother Bear, so <laughs> there's going to be... There's going to be some similarities in there. I'm going to, I'm going to mute all the sound effects and everything. A uh, question from Martin. If our membership is still running, can we buy the membership for later now? Yes, you can. You can, yes. renew, you can renew early and lock in at the current price and extend it. So here he is. He's made Snow Bear. And uh, this is still in storyboard form right here. Uh, but he's very proud of himself. He likes him. And he gets, he gets all excited. I was looking at our dog when he gets excited i thought it'd be kind of fun to do that kind of thing and then he goes and sits down and, and they look off into the sunset now he's got a new friend so now we launch off into the rest of the of, of the short where they're having fun together and so the first time we see them they're uh whoops let me stop this and start it again because it's it's stuttering a little bit it was just stutter. Yeah. For people who don't know, Aaron, the software he's using is called TV Paint. Yes. And he's working on a Wacom Cintiq. So here we see that, oh, he's going to change, he can change his pose. And then in the background right here, he's going to be doing it again, changing his pose. And there's the shot we're working on. And we see, oh, he pe he's making sure he's not peeking. And then he runs off. And hides behind the hill. Make sure he's. And he hides again. So it's him just having fun. There's one more little gag here where he's, hey, Snow Bear's a vegan, so he doesn't want to eat meat. <laughs> so it's just a, a little gag there. So anyway, uh, that's kind of how it all fits in there. So we're going to go back to our editing or our animation software. And I'm going to jump to our little section in here. So this is where he's poking his head out. So I want to I want to get some in betweens in there. In betweens <clears throat> in betweens mean in between drawings, the drawings that smooth out the action. So that being said, boom. And what you see, the, these two images that you see, this is onion skin. I'm looking at the drawing before and the drawing after. So I'm going to put a drawing right in between. And then we're just going to draw. So ask me questions, folks. Ask away. I want to answer your questions. Uh, per, actually, it's a personal uh, uh, question about the onion skinning, because I know that back when you animated traditionally at a uh, um at disney uh you didn't use the backlight so, so you want to do the onion skin instead you did the flipping uh was it weird uh at first to transition to onion skinning on on tv paint no because uh even without the light the backing of the light the translucency of the paper gave me enough onion skin so i could still see through the tr the, the translucency <clears throat> of the paper in fact <clears throat> the onion skin in tv paint is actually adjustable so you can, I think, have up to 12 frames in front and 12 frames at back, which is just crazy. Aaron usually only has one or two frames. Yeah, I just have. Side yeah, I just have one or one. But you can, and then, then uh, you can also adju uh, adjust the uh, intensity of which it. is essentially equating what you were doing on a on a desk. Yep, exactly. For instance, right. let me let me jump back real quick because it's it's kind of cool. Yeah. Let me go back to here. Detlef is on, says, hey guys, it's been a while. Very excited to see you work again. It's been a while. It's been a while. So Detlef. So here, here he is running up the hill. Now let me turn on, this is always fun to look at. I'm going to turn our, all on, they're all on there and all on there so you can see, whoops. There you go, look at that. You can see all the drawings. And so then as I scrub through, it gives you a sense of all the drawings that are done. Jackie on YouTube says, oh my God, finally a stream again. I missed you guys. We are here the first Friday of every month now. 
And we are on our members only live streams twice a week over at creatureartteacher.com. Look at that. Isn't that trippy? Looks like a trippy, uh, like 70s effect. Yeah. So that, that gives you a sense of, you know, how we keep track of our arcs and spacing and all of that. Because you're seeing, what you're seeing is 10 drawings ahead and 10 drawings behind. So you're seeing 20 drawings. Actually, you're seeing 21 drawings because of the actual drawing. So it gives you a little sense of how we do the movement. Anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, when did you start working with uh, Glenn Keane? I started working with Glenn Keane in uh, June of 1988. June of 1988. That's when uh, that's when he started. Uh, I I got an internship, and uh, he was my mentor, and he started teaching me animation. And that was uh, 35 years ago, right? I'm an old man. I'm a dusty, crusty old man. Uh, AMM Media <clears throat> on YouTube says, Hey, Aaron, I have two questions. Do you ever plan on doing portfolio reviews? And also, do you have plans for any future appearances in Kansas City, like at Planet Comic Con, for instance? Well, funny they should mention the portfolio thing. You want to mention the... Uh... Absolutely. Go for it. Teed it right up. So we are very excited to announce do, 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 <clears throat> that next week on June 8th, we are launching our Discord server. Woohoo! So this is, um, once again, this is a member's perk. So if you are a member, either an annual member or a monthly streaming member to CreatureArtTeacher.com, you will be able to join us on our members discord server which is a really cool uh setup we've got a we've got a lot of fun events planned over there but we're going to have a launch party on june 8th and we're going to be doing a portfolio review yes exactly So, if you're a member or if you're not a member you can become one and head on over to creatureartteacher.com portfolio and you can submit your your work or your reel if you have a url you can submit it now, I want to be clear, I'm not going to be reviewing every portfolio. I'm going to go through and I'm going to select a handful, and then we'll we'll re, uh, review those live. Right. And then, you know, maybe if we get more submissions than we can get through that are that we want to do, maybe we'll break it into multiple sessions because we're going to be doing a lot over there. So, you know, this is this be a good opportunity, but this is our launch party. June 8th, you can sign up over at CreatureArtTeacher.com slash Portfolio to submit your work for Aaron to review it on our new Discord, ser Discord server, which is launching next week. Yeah. As far as Kansas City goes, I don't think we have any current plans to get to Kansas City. Not yet. Or KC, so I'm, is KC Kansas City? I'm assuming that's what they mean. Kansas City, here we come. So really, all I'm doing is in betweening right into this pose. He's gonna what's called slow into it. So when I when we mean slow in, he's as he gets closer and closer to the stop, he's slowing down gradually. So that's a slow in. He's slowing into the pose. Any plans to go to Tanzania again for a safari shoot, Eric? Well, we we don't usually go to Tanzania. We actually usually go to Kenya. Although and you've been into the Tanzania side, right? I have been to Tanzania, yeah, but that was 1998. That was a long time ago. Uh, but um, there's no current plans. We, we were hoping maybe coming up in September, but we're not sure yet. We've got a lot going on. i got a film to make. Got a film to make, people. <laughs> we've got several projects that we're working on right now that we're trying to get through are you excited to see spider-man across the spider-verse this weekend yes my stepdaughter is currently there right now watching it oh yeah it opened today didn't it? yeah I, I 
with Memorial Day, <clears throat> this week's been so weird to me. So like <clears throat> all the, I've been a day behind. Like yeah, well the week flew by, didn't it? Tuesday felt like Monday to me, so today feels like Thursday. I don't know. Yeah. It was a three day weekend here in the US. Uh Julia has a Discord uh uh question. So help your Discord illiterate friend here. Is the Discord server public? Uh so so our uh, portfolios are going to be public? The Discord server is <clears throat> accessible by members. So any members, annual or monthly streaming members that join us on the live stream will be able to watch the Discord. Now we probably won't keep that particular video up as a replay. Uh, or we could, I guess we can get people's feedback on what they'd like on that. But the, uh, yes. So if he does a portfolio review, it'll be a live. It'll be live, live, but it's not public to the, like this stream today is public, but it is public to the subscribers, to, to the subscribers that are, that are watching. And, uh, and I have my own, uh, two part question about this board. Um, for the people, uh, to get on, um, uh, I know that the the release party is on on the eighth. Is that also the the official re like the official release? Yep. That the yep. Party? That's when we're launching. And also for the for the members, will they be getting uh, an email to the Discord link, or will they have to go to like the uh, the Preach Our Teacher homepage for the uh... to log into their account? It's right there in the uh, in the my account oh, dashboard. Login? Yep. Yep. Okay. Good questions, but we'll send out an email as well to members when it's when it's up. So I'm animating this all in 4K, but even at 4K, once you zoom in a certain amount, you, the resolution starts to loosen up, and so I'm really zoomed in on this, so the resolution's a little bit. I'm about at the end of the resolution. I'm about as as, as far as I want to blow up the drawing at this point. Uh, Justin Kingston says, hey, everybody. Hey, Justin. Hey, Justin. Another one of our regulars on our Tuesday and Thursday live stream. Is TV Paint free? No, it is not. They do have a free trial, but it is not free software. But it is awesome software. I'll give you, tell you that. Who taught you how to animate? I don't think you went to college, as, as I don't recall it from your other live streams you mentioned. <laughs> I did go to college. I went to college to become an illustrator. You did not I, study animation. I did not study animation. I went, to be an, I, I went to be an illustrator. I wanted to work for National Geographic. That was my big goal. Found out that National Geographic really only freelance all their work, and I didn't want to freelance, and so I started looking at other options, and I found out that Hallmark Cards and Disney... We're going to come to my school and interview for internships. And so lucky for me, Disney happened to be first. And I never really thought about animation before. And uh, But I put together a portfolio of uh, animal drawings and figure drawings. And the whole idea was Disney wanted to see if they could take uh, students from strong uh, foundational schools in art, like drawing and painting, and then bring them in for an internship and teach them how to animate. And so that was the big test so I got accepted into this internship, and uh, I started. I started in June of 1988 through July of 1988, and during that time, uh, Glenn Keane was my mentor. And, um, and for those of you that don't know who Glenn Keane is, he's the creator of Ariel from The Little Mermaid, that's out right now, the new version of The Little Mermaid. And uh, he created the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, and Tarzan, and a whole bunch of great characters. But he. Um, he, t he took me under his wing as this, you know, fresh little 20-year-old that, that I was and taught me how to animate. And that was 35 years ago. And so here we are. I would say you learned how to animate by Walt, uh, through Walt Disney. Yeah. <laughs> Sandra on YouTube asks, can you talk about how pre-digital animation changed? Like, say, between 1950 and 1980, was 101 Dalmatians done differently than Cinderella, for instance? Well, yes. 101, Dal 101 Dalmatians from Cinderella, which was early 50s, Cinderella was still ink and paint. The big, the big leap that they made on, on 101 Dalmatians was the advent of the Xerox process, where they 
you know, back in the old days, the animators would do a drawing, get their drawings done, they'd be cleaned up and everything, and then they would go to the ink and paint department. The ink and paint department would, one of the artists there would put a, a clear piece of acetate over the drawing, and they would trace that drawing with ink. So with a literal ink pen. Commonly and, called a cell. Yeah, and uh, different and, and different colored inks. And um, and then they would and they would do that on the front. Then they'd turn that over and they'd paint all the character color on the back. And so they wanted to come up with a process that could speed it up. And so they came up with the Xerox process, which um, they basically took the drawings and just Xeroxed them right onto the front of the cell. So you were getting a more accurate rendition of the drawings first of all and any kind of little sketch marks and anything like that would transfer so that's why when you watch 101 dalmatians you can see little bits of line crawl and and the sketchiness and everything that's because it transferred right onto the 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 cell the acetate from the in the xerox process and then so that saved the inking process altogether they got rid of that it's sort of like uh, people getting scared about ai nowadays losing jobs right so you know, it, it's, it was technology moving forward at the time. And um, so uh, what happened was uh, the, the inking went away and that sped things up. And then all they had to do was paint the back. Jump ahead years after that into the late 80s, uh, Little Mermaid was the last film that they did cells on. As a matter of fact, the last shot of the film, they went over to the new process. Uh, one shot in the Little Mermaid was, you know, when uh, uh, King... Triton was waving goodbye. Uh, that that process, they they went away from doing cells altogether, and the drawings were scanned into the computer, and uh, they were colored digitally. That was the first time they were co colored digitally, and they went away from cells forever. So 1989 was the last time they ever used cells, and then uh, then everything was done digitally after that. Uh, but paper animation that didn't go away really until probably 2003 to 2004 and i was doing paper all the way up to 2006 15. i was going to say actually princess and the frog was still done on paper right yeah yeah, yeah that, well, that's right i forgot about that yeah princess and the frog was the last one uh, done on paper and then uh it was uh it was 2016 that i for the first time went this way went digital and uh went paperless and, and i love it and for me it's not it's not that different it's just a different uh setup obviously but the thinking the, the the approach and all that is still the same and vermis on youtube says i just bought a membership hey that's awesome <coughs> so for those Congratulations. So for welcome those, vermis for those who may have just joined us uh we are running a big sale over at creatureartteacher.com our memberships right now are at their lowest prices ever our annual membership is 120 dollars off that is Holy the God. cheapest it's ever been with an annual membership, what's cool is you get access to all 700 hours, well, nearly 700 hours of art and animation lessons. You get thousands of brushes. You get, uh, you now get our live events included for free. That's a change to our membership. They used to be a discount. Now they're free. And what's cool is everything is yours to keep. So yeah, it's not just streaming. So if you become an annual member, member, you get to download and keep your files. Now we do offer a monthly streaming plan if you'd rather just commit for a shorter term basis, and that's streaming only. Um, that one also gets you access to our Discord server as well. So both memberships are on sale. Head on over to creatureartteacher.com, and both memberships get you access to our exclusive live streams uh, where we have Snow Bear making of twice a week. Exactly. And, and I and I really look forward to those. I I love, you know, we we start at uh, ten o'clock Eastern time every every Tuesday and Thursday. And what's so nice is we got a really international gang, well, a, a little family, and uh, it's all lots of good mornings and good afternoons and how you doing and how was your day and and it's me talking about animation and and then we talk about art in general or. All kinds of stuff. It's just a fun, fun little discussion. Will you be at Lightbox this year? No, we're not going to be at Lightbox this year, but we probably will be at CTN. The biggest reason is, is we're trying to finish up Snow Bear. So exactly. <clears throat> I've, I've always just pictured the day we, like, uh, Snow Bear finally out there, out to the public, out to the world, and we're all just sitting there and just go, all right. Now what? Now what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. You want to make the course? Yeah, sure. Why not? 
How would you describe the 1960s? I don't know. I was born in the late 1960s. Awesome. Birth. <laughs> Birthy. I was born in 1968. So groovy. So you were alive when when we when we first landed on the moon. Yes, I was. Wow. I was a year old. A year old. Supposedly, your brother Travis was conceived. That's right. <laughs> Why, when that happened? We have left off. I think my parents were really happy that they landed on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best app for animation on an iPad? Um. Well, there's Calipeg. Uh, Procreate uh, has a really good animation uh, uh, capabilities. Um, yeah, if you already have Procreate, there's some pretty solid animation tools right in there. Now, it's yeah. not intended currently for these sort of longer form animation projects. Um, for that, you'd probably want to use something like Calipeg. Um, there's some other software out there. There's one called Paper, I think, that's supposed to be pretty good. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you already have Procreate, check that out because it's it's got some useful little tools in there. Yeah. And I, you know, Procreate so user friendly, and uh, and they really got it kind of got it down as far as the uh, if you want to do simple animation. Tree you know. of Life on YouTube says the membership is pretty dope. I love it, especially the live streams. A bunch of good people on there. Oh. Yes, Tree of Life. We always uh, enjoy seeing you as well. Uh, as, soon, as soon as the stream ends, we're all just like, "What the? Why the heck are all these people here?" <laughs> <laughs> is uh, Dea. Dea or Dai, I'm not sure how she pronounced or they pronounce it. Uh, is pairing uh, is painting from life enough to paint from imagination? Enough to paint from yeah. Well, I mean, the more you paint from life, the better you'll get at painting from imagination. If that's what you're asking, I think that's what you're asking. And yeah, I mean, that's understanding the world around you gives you the visual library to pull from, the mental visual library to pull from later on down the road when you want to do stuff from imagination. And I'm talking about things like, you know, obviously you're not going to go out and paint a dragon from life, but you're going to be painting, you're going to, you know, when you do paint from life, you're going to be looking at different lighting situations. So you're going to understand how to, how to light that dragon that you might, you know, draw uh, from your imagination. And then there's, you know, there's other animals that are similar. If you draw lizards and reptiles and things like that from life and you look at their textures, you look at their anatomy, you look at their, the way they, you know, the way they, they do cast shadows with lighting and things like that. That'll all help you down the road when you create things from your imagination. So anytime you can work from life, that always helps with your imagination drawing. Uh, Lukas on Twitch says, hey, I just found you and I was looking for a little bit of advice. <clears throat> I have a question about whether or not I should pursue an animation career when I've never really learned drawing and there's no formal graduation method for that in my country to get into animation. I feel anxious about my life and I've started, I've never really started drawing because I'm disabled, but I want to try getting into the industry, but I'm afraid I'll never be good at drawing. Well, it depends. If you want to go, if you want to do CG animation, you don't necessarily have to draw um, computer animation, but if you want to do traditional hand-drawn animation, like what I'm doing, then yes, you need to learn how to draw. Now being afraid that you won't be good enough to draw well, if you don't start, you're right. You never will be because you never started. So the only way you're going to be able to do it is to start and, and just start practicing. Um, but like I said, there's there's a lot of options out there nowadays um, as far as uh, being able to get into the animation industry without necessarily having to draw. Part, a big part of that is computer animation. I know a lot of computer animators that don't draw. Do I think it helps to be able to draw? I do. I very much do. Um but I don't think it's absolutely imperative nowadays. In response to your uh, answer about the about the sixties, uh, Philip on Facebook asked, "How would you describe the eighties then?" The eighties were uh, radical, <laughs> radical yeah. bright, colorful, neon. Uh, the seventies, the seventies okay, to me, I like the seventies better. I was younger in the seventies. Seventies, you know, for me was I age like age two better. up to age twelve. Yeah. Age two to age 12. And the 70s were very, very loose, free, I guess. We as kids, 
And it wasn't just my family. It was a lot of my friends. Um, I mean, I'm talking like when I was 9 and 10 years old, my friends and I would get on our bikes, we'd pack up our camping gear, and we'd tell our parents, we're, gonna, we're leaving, we're going to go camping for two days. And they'd say, okay. And I was nine years old. And they'd say, okay, we'll be back on Sunday. And, and I was nine. I think the oldest guy, kid in our group was maybe 12. And we'd go camping for two days. We'd go out in the woods. And I mean, we'd, and it was funny. We'd, we'd, we'd set up our tents. We'd start chopping wood. We'd go finish fishing. We'd catch fish. We'd clean the fish. We'd have fish for dinner. I mean, it was, it was, it was great. It was a great time. And uh, so there was a, you know, I spent all of my time outdoors. I never, you know, I really spent all my that time. That was mostly still true in the 80s, too. It was really the 90s oh, when, yeah. it, when it started to really change in terms of. Yeah. It was the late 80s that the culture started to get way more litigious. Yeah. And a lot more, I don't know. I don't want to say fear mongering. That's well, the wrong I, thing. I think like, it, it, a lot more fear it, about it, it coincides directly with the news channels breaking right. up. Exactly. When the, CNN came on the scene and Fox news, news and everything, news to scare then it, exactly. That's when all of a sudden you saw a change in society as well. Yeah, because when I was a kid, it was the same deal. You know, you just you just came in when those street lights turned on. That was the deal. You know, the street yeah. lights. You know, we were out playing on our bikes or we were skateboard. You know, skateboarding was huge in the eighties. Obviously, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it wasn't. Good buddy of mine that was a teacher at Ringling, Phil Kiyokio. I believe you've met him, Aaron, a long time ago. He um he used to own a really famous skate park in the seventies and into the early eighties in Florida called Sensation Basin. <clears throat> and they had like the Pepsi skateboarding challenge that like world championships there, you know. But <clears throat> basically by the early nineties, late eighties, early nineties, he was put out of business because all of a sudden parents were suing if somebody fell and yeah. got hurt. And that just didn't exist. It didn't happen in the seventies. Sixties, seventies, or early half of the eighties. It, yeah. it all started in the later part of it. Yep. Yep, exactly. It was we had so much fun. And I was always out swimming in the if there was a body of water, I was in it. I don't care if it was a canal, if it was anything. And we were we were always, you know, one thing we would always do, I, I loved going fishing, me and my buddies. And so we, we uh, there's a couple of little freshwater uh, man-made lakes near where we were living. And we'd, um, we'd make the, all these little tiny dough balls from bread. <laughs> then we'd bring the be bread bag out. We'd tie it to our belts and we'd go snorkeling with these hand fishing lines with these little hooks. And we'd snorkel out to the middle of the lake, and we'd put these little dough balls on, and we'd we'd be diving and fishing under, underwater, and we'd catch these little pan fish, and then bring them home and eat them. I remember when you taught me the the dough ball uh, trick in back when we lived in Kissimmee when I was. Oh there. yeah, yeah. I had my own little little fish pole and everything. See, being from Maryland, the big thing with us was was crabbing, blue crabs. Oh so yeah. We would go down to the pier, go down to a pier or a dock. Yeah, and you would just tie pieces of chicken to string, and throw it off the edge, and they would just grab it, and they wouldn't let go. And as you got them to the top, you would just get just them. Just net them. Net. Yeah, yeah, we did that in uh, down around south, south of Naples. We did a lot of blue crabbing. Uh, Mary on Twitch asks, "Is it possible to get Photoshop for other devices than just a Wacom top tablet? That's a bit too expensive for me. For me, and also, does the CC stand for Creative Cloud? Uh, I can tackle this one. <clears throat> so." You do not need a Wacom to have Photoshop. So there's other tablets out there, uh, display tablets like what Aaron's drawing on, where you're drawing on the computer. Uh, there's some different brands out there. You can also use a pen tablet, which is like a little pad that you draw on that doesn't, you're not drawing on the screen. And those are much more affordable. Those are like 50 bucks, I think. Yeah. You know, and those will work with Photoshop as well and as far as device, but there's also photoshop elements which is a cheaper yeah. version yep and you can get photoshop for mac pc or they also have it for the ipad now. another twitch question i am studying animation my question is how do i motivate myself to work i love animation and i would love to know if you have anything that will help me be motivated to work more any tricks well i mean motivation is a funny if you're talking about inspiration, that's one thing if you don't know what to animate. But motivation, I mean, that's just work ethic. You've got to, you know, animation doesn't, it, it, if you're going into animation, you've got to be prepared to do a lot of work because, I mean, it, it, it's labor intensive. It, you know, I'm creating, you know, 
24 drawings or 12 drawings for every second that goes by. So, you know, we figured on this on this short alone, I'm going to be doing about 10 or 12,000 drawings. So just, someone just asked on YouTube, what frame rate do you animate at? So he animates at 24, 24 frames. frames a second. Yeah. So as far as being motivated, it's the love of animation. It's the love of doing it. And if that doesn't motivate you enough, then you might want to think about something else because you'll always have a struggle uh, of being motivated because it's, it, you know, I do this because I, I, I just love it. I can't not do it. I love the art of animation. <laughs> Should an animator also draw backgrounds or is that field reserved specifically for background illustrators? Well, usually that backgrounds is broken up into a different department. And yes, there's background painters. There's, an, you know, in, the, in most studios, it works out <clears throat> that it's background, you know, it's animation is a division uh, or is a, is a department, backgrounds a department, layout is a department. There's a lot of different departments. So, uh, but I, I myself, because I have a background in painting and illustration, um, I, I do a lot of my own backgrounds. Well, I do all of my own backgrounds for our, our personal projects and I've done background painting before. So like for, for instance, you know, for snow bear, um, I've done all the backgrounds. So let me jump over real quick. So all of these, if you look at stuff like this, you know, all of these, you, uh, you know, we came up with. The art direction and uh and kind of you know the look of what we want and then i'm i'm not only am i animating but i'm also you know creating all the backgrounds with it too now that comes from having spent years and years <coughs> in the animation industry and understanding how it all works as well speaking of which if you'd like to learn a little bit about aaron's approach to painting on Saturday, July 15th, we are having a watercolor workshop. It's going to be an all-day workshop event. Uh, we posted a video of this on our YouTube channel last week. But if you head on over to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can sign up. Spots are limited. It's uh, We keep it to a small group so that Aaron can answer questions. But it's an all-day workshop event where he's going to teach you his approach to watercolor painting. So yeah, that's going to be over basically six hours, right? Yeah, it's going to be a yeah six-hour event with Q and A. Um, <clears throat> we'll send you out a supply list beforehand, and basically we're going to go as well as some reference images, and he's going to teach you some uh, animal painting. And, and did we say a landscape too, or have you decided on what you? I think it's going to be two animals. Two animals. Yeah. So. In any case, uh, maybe it'll be an animal in the landscape. In the landscape. There you go. So um, if you head on over to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can learn more about it. And as we mentioned earlier, if you're a member, these live events are now included free. So, so I want to I make a point. So you know, each ticket is about 50 bucks. They're yep. 50 bucks right now. How much is a, with the discount, how much is a membership now? Uh, $129. So basically for a little over twice that, you can get, a full membership have free access for all of the uh for the next four uh live events that we do plus you get all of the uh, educational content so think about it it really is the best value in art education we work pretty hard to yeah we do any, to keep plan, it uh, any plans for in-person workshops not right now. We're, we're always got something cooking, but we don't have one planned up because we're we are so focused on trying to get snow bear done we are trying to trying to eliminate any and all travel. Normally, this by this time of year, we've already gone to like four countries. So we're trying to. Yeah. A week later, hey, you want to go to Japan? <laughs> Do you happen to have any old drawings from when you were a beginner that you could show us? No, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, when I was a kid, my uh, when I was in high school, my house burnt into the ground, and I lost all of my art. So I don't really have anything. I do have some college stuff stuffed in a uh, stuffed in a closet somewhere. I'll, I'll pull it out one of these times. Somewhere Maybe there's concept. somewhere there's that ninja. Drawing. Hey Manny, what's that? Somewhere there's that ninja drawing that you're familiar. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably one of these drawers here because that's probably your oldest surviving drawing. I would imagine. Probably, probably. yeah, yeah. But yeah, Manny's on. Says hello there, Blaze. Hello, Manny. Manny. How was your trip to Bozeman, Montana? Bozeman, Montana. I watch this. I'm going to cheat. Has that uh, was that trip already made, or is it or is it coming up? No, he and he and uh, Peter went. Peter. 
I think they went to Utah too, didn't they? I felt like yeah. I saw them there recently. To Utah. Many, many, many. <laughs> So I'm doing a little Erica, tea here because I want to put this on ones. And Erica Bay says the annual annual membership is the best value. It really is. Manny says uh, heading to Jackson today again. Too many bears. <laughs> too many bears. Dang. Dang it. Aaron, what sound does an elk make? Well, it's a very high pitched. It's a high pitched squeal, kind of. Yeah. It's a bugle. Yeah, it's a really <clears throat> interesting sound. YouTube question Would the live event be okay for someone with minimal exposure to watercolor, or is it truly for intermediate and advanced water artists only? I mean, it's. I'm going to be kind of flying through. I'm not going to be spending time teaching a lot of basics. So. Um, if you're an absolute beginner, you'll probably, you might be left behind a little bit, but that being said, if you come on and, uh, if you become, you know, if you sign up for it, you're going to be able to replay that too. It's not just the six hours. You'll be able to get, uh, review that on video so you can go back over it again. Yeah. If you, if you register for the event, you get a recording of it so you, that you can rewatch at any time. So I always found <clears throat> with something like that, even if I was a beginner, there was something to be said for kind of seeing where the what I should be getting towards versus just starting out with the bare basics. So right. Have you ever tried painting your backgrounds inside of TV Paint as opposed to Photoshop? Uh no, I haven't. Just Although because I know you can. Yes, you can, and I. To be honest with you, I just do it because of convenience. I haven't taken the time to learn. Uh, Amit says, Kanishiwa and hello from Tokyo, Japan. Kanishiwa. Kanishiwa. Ohio gozaimasu. Uh, although it's not morning there and it's not morning here, so scratch that. Question. Uh, in this short film, you are the director, supervisor, and animator. So how do you direct and supervise yourself to see your animation from a fresh perspective? I have... Nick and Dustin and folks online, Hi. everybody. That's that's also one of the fun things when uh, when we do our live streams. I get suggestions from uh, uh, you know Zoundji and and Mike Fenster, um, and Erica. Yeah, I mean everyone everyone you know they pitch in. They get, hey they they say hey we might, we might want to try this or wouldn't it be funny if you do this? And so I take those ideas, and uh, and it's fun. And you we shamelessly, go, shamelessly <laughs> steal them. Yeah, we shamelessly steal them. <laughs> no, it's great. We, um, but also, you know, Aaron and I have been working on this project for, I mean, the initial idea was over six years ago now. We've only been animating for nine or ten months, but actually, I guess it's coming up on a year now, isn't it? We're coming up on July will be a year. But, um, you know, that's part of the reason you do pre-production. You work out the storyboards, you work out the shots, you work out. And then, you know, even though you do all that and you get it as tight as you possibly can, new ideas come up in the middle of stuff. Like once you get something in the animation, you know, ah, that's just the timing on this doesn't work or I need a few more frames. And, and that's all part of the process. And that's what we go through on our twice weekly live streams. Exactly. It is all part of the plan. So here you can see him popping his head out from behind. Now the reason you can see through this overlay is because I've, I've set the, uh, I pushed the, uh, I set the opacity down a little bit so I so I purposely could see through it because I want to close off those lines where he's behind so that when I do paint him the color won't leak out. Have you tried uh, Open Tunes software to animate yet? I have not. That's the Studio Ghibli software. No, we, we're going to have to try that on a future live stream. I've heard that's good. I've heard Blender's really good. There's a, uh, I know you can animate in Krita, Clip Studio Paint. We got a whole list of videos we got to get to. Yeah. Uh, question for Nick How did you get into art? Uh, I got into art, I think, like a lot of kids, teenagers in the, in the 90s, in that 
<clears throat> there was a big resurgence of comic books from that era. And I knew that I wanted to do comic books or animation. That was kind of the thing that I just was like, that's, that's got to be what I, I was always drawing, always drawing as a kid, which is crazy because I don't draw anywhere near like I should anymore. Um, but um, I was really motivated that I knew I wanted a, a career in the arts. So when I was like 12 or 13, I wrote letters to and sent samples of my drawings to Marvel Comics and to Disney, which is funny because now you just send it to the same place. Yeah. Um, and they both sent me back uh, letters and packets. In fact, our friend Zanji posted one that he got that was similar the other day. His letter came from Glenn Keane. I got a very similar letter from another animator. And, uh, you know, they kind of give you feedback on your, on your, on the stuff that you sent. And it, it also, uh, the Marvel one was really good because I sent panels to that and they actually took the time to tell me, no, this drawing needs to be better. This needs to be better. You need to be better at anatomy. And they both included a list of schools that they recommended. And, uh, there was a few schools that overlapped both lists, but one of them was Ringling College of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida. And so I went and checked out all the schools on the East Coast, and that was that was the one that I settled on. And that actually happens to be the school that Aaron went to. And that's exactly flash forward to many years later, and that's how he and I met, was we were connected through Ringling College of Art. I went and gave a you were teaching and I went and gave a lecture at your class. Yeah. Uh, Zarina the Zebra says, I actually plan to marathon the streams for no snow bear soon to keep me productive while adjusting to having a new puppy. <laughs> well, you've got a lot. We just had our 87th members only stream yesterday, as a matter of fact. So 87th. Yep. We're closing in on a hundred. And the other thing too, is if you become a member, you have access to all 87 of those streams. Yep. You can go back and watch them as many times as you want. Yep. And that's but with both the annual and the monthly streaming plan. You, you know, it's going to be really cool. I don't know if anyone's ever done this before, created a film and recorded the entire process. I don't I mean, think so. Literally. When this film is done, we will literally have documented this the entire making. This was something making. I wanted to do back when you were potentially working on Art Story back in the day. Remember, that was like, oh, yeah. cool if we could do so. I'm, I'm just glad that that idea has managed to, to continue to survive, even though that project went away. Yeah. You know, now we're working on, on this and getting to do that because I think it's fun for people, you know? It is. And it really is. Once Snow Bear is done, we're going to continue to do these member streams. And the idea is going to be we're going to continue to keep doing short animated projects. And we want each animated short to be kind of like a mini version of animation film school. So, you know, we might do a short that's all about effects animation. And so that would be kind of the driving thrust of the, sh of the short animated project might be only a minute or two minutes long. And we would teach effects animation over a series of live streams. So there's lots more beyond snow bear, snow bear. If one was planning to do indie animation such as freelance, would an art school like CalArts or SCAD be necessary? I don't think any art school is necessary. Um, you want to tackle that one, Aaron? Yeah, ask it one more have, time. I, if I wanted to do indie animation, is a school like CalArts or SCAD necessary? Okay, so like Nick said, nowadays, with the amount of information that you can get online in education, I don't think colleges are, are really necessary. Now, everybody learns in different ways, and there's certain people that really thrive in a college-type environment with you know traditional classes, you're interacting with other students, but if you're really self-motivated and, and, and you have access to, you know, one of the other things things that you lose by not going to college is the exchange of ideas. It's, it's the exchange of, you know, you're surrounded by like-minded people learning the same thing and you're exchanging ideas and you're exchanging uh, inspiration and all that kind of thing. 
Now, if you are able to do that on your own, then there's plenty of opportunity out there online to learn. Um, you know, so it's, it's really up to you. But there's, you know, take our website, for instance. I'm, you know, it was my goal when we started this. I basically, I got so tired of how expensive colleges were getting. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to take everything I've learned, 90% of it being everything I learned outside of college. I'm going to take everything I learned and I'm going to try, try to document it and offer it up for people to, to, to consume and learn without having to go through the whole process that I had to go through to learn it. And so, and there's a lot of sites out there, Schoolism and Proco and a lot of great guys out there that are, you know, we're all trying to do the same thing. And, uh, but my biggest thing is just uh, how obscene college tuitions have gotten. And, and I know it, it's, it's tough, but if, if you can swing it and if you have good scholarships or aid or, or just to have the financial means to do it, then sure, college might be the right thing for you. But, um, but you don't necessarily have to do it anymore. Uh, Twitch question. I have a full-time job, but I want to make my way into animation and art. Are simple animation exercises enough to make a decent reel, since that's what I currently have time for, or would I be better to have one larger project that I chip away at? Well, it depends on what you want to do. If, you, uh, if you're looking to get into animation as a career and you want to put together a reel that's going to get you a job, then no, the simple little exercises are not going to be enough for you to put together a reel that someone will hire you from. But if you're just looking to animate for the love of animation, then sure, do whatever makes you happy. First of all, you need to do those exercises anyway. You do. Yeah, so the ball bounce and the flower sack and all that stuff, the reason they're still around is because they still teach you each one of those less exercises teaches you something about weight or anticipation or squash and stretch. That's absolutely fundamental to hand-drawn animation. So you, you need to take the time and do those. Now, having said that to Aaron's point, that's not what recruiters want to see in a reel. What recruiters want to see in a reel is the ability to demonstrate good acting. Yeah, they want to see that you can create the animation that's going to end up on the film. And that's not basic animation, you know, exercises. That's full-blown acting, you know, acting with your pencil, acting with your stylus and, and uh, doing it through drawings. And, uh, and so that, you know, anytime you can get any acting scenes, uh, char two characters interacting uh, on your reel, then that's always great for uh, recruiters to see. Do you... Uh, ever feel like you could do your uh, better in your animation, even though people around you tell you it's good? I know that's a weird question, but I feel like that sometimes with my own animation. Of course, I think we can always have room for improvement, and I always, I always see things that I could do better. And also, I never tell Aaron that he's good. I actually tell him he sucks. Yeah, you got to keep me down, constantly. man, because that keeps me working hard. Whatever he does, I let him know that's a terrible job. <laughs> Uh, when you reach a certain point of Snow Bear, will you stop the member live streams so there won't be major spoilers? Uh, yes. Will there be live streams with other topics? Yes, there will be live streams with other topics. Now, yes, because I'm, I'm only taking the live streams uh, from a story standpoint. I'm only taking them to a certain point, and then the last half, basically, um, is going to be kept secret. Yeah, we don't want to reveal the but ending. But there's a lot that I need to do in the front half. It's you know, more background paintings. I've got to I've got to color the characters. There's uh, we're going to be redoing some shots. So there's going to be plenty of stuff to do while I'm off. You know, on the on the on the Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays that we're not we're with the you know with the gang. That's when I'm off animating the stuff that uh, I'm not going to let anybody see until we release it. The secret stuff. The secret stash. <clears throat> I want to let people know that over at CreatureArtTeacher.com, we also just released a line of puzzles. Uh, these are exclusive uh, puzzles created by a good friend of ours up in Vermont, Vermont Puzzle Company. He created a series of 10 new puzzles. They're all limited edition. Uh, we've got different piece counts, and we've even got one that's a member's exclusive available. That's a 500-piece puzzle. If you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash puzzle, 
There's 140 piece puzzles aimed at kids or younger puzzle makers. There's more challenging puzzles and they all feature works of Aaron's art. So if you head on over to creatureartteacher.com slash puzzle, you can check those out. Um, they've been super popular and we're really glad people are enjoying them. Oh, you know what else we got? This might, that might be a good segue into these. Yeah. Hey, Dustin, you want to jump over and be cameraman? Yeah, just one second. We got something cool to show you that we've been working on. Yeah. Actually, I wish we had Marshall this over is, here. Why don't you go, before you do this, why don't you run over and grab your grandfather? If he's if he's in his apartment. Oh, he switched cameras. Sorry. Yeah. Switch it back. And we need to turn that. Sorry, folks. Uh, go back to my desktop. My desktop. Turn Sorry, that guys. overhead fan, too, because we're going to get a crazy strobe. Like uh, if he's in the shop, just let him be. But if he's over in his apartment, tell him to come over. Where he's going to be. He's going to be on camera. <laughs> So, uh, so my father, uh, my father's 83 years old. He's going to be 84 actually next month. So he's basically 84. And then, uh, he's a, he's an incredible musician, woodworker, uh, just a kind of a jack of all trades. And so he's been looking for, he lives with me for half the year and he's been looking for some fun things to do. And, uh, we started talking about, it. we were talking about this with our, with our friends on our, during our, uh, production live streams. And people were asking about drawing boxes and animate, portable animation desks and things. And so, so my father and I sat down and started designing what we thought could be a fun little portable drawing desk, portable dr animation desk. And uh, we came up with a couple of little prototypes. And uh, we wanted to show them to you to see what the interest might be out there, to see if you guys might be interested. And in. now we've already shown the larger one to our production stream friends. And there's a, we've had a really good response, but I want you guys to meet the man, the myth, the myth, the legend, Marshall Blaze. Uh, also, let us know in the comments how the sound cell, uh, sounds to you guys on this stream, because I'm noticing, Aaron, because I couldn't see this before when Dustin was sitting there, but when you're talking, it clips into the red, which is never a good sign. Okay. Just let us know in the comments how the sound is. Am I hot? Is my mic hot? When you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. He's here. Uh, annoying. There he is. Come on in, father. The overhead fans on the switch somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. Hey, Marshall, how you doing? Doing good. Here it is, right here. Right here. Zero. How you doing, Sonny? I am yeah. good, Father. We're uh, we're just sitting here. We we're just talking about the uh, the desks that you designed, and uh, so we wanted to share them with everybody. And and uh, we brought I brought the big one over, and we wanted to see what the interest might be. We got a got a bunch of people online right now. A bunch of folks. And uh, come over behind me. Come over here and look into the camera right there. Say hi to everybody. Hi. This is the old man. This is the original right here. How you doing? <laughs> so let me uh, let me get up real quick. I'm I'm attached to a mic here, so back up. There we go. Gee. <laughs> so make sure we got that. Ooh, yeah. And we can just use, you can use that. that oh, yeah, I'll do. Well, no, I can do this. So let's go over here. This is the small box. Now, this one doesn't have any latches on it yet. We're going to have side latches. Um, but uh, it's a it's a portable box. You, can, you know, it's got a handle. And uh, this is 18 by 24. And, uh, and keep in mind, these are all handmade by the old man right here. They're very, very cool. And uh, come around this way, Dustin, because I want to I want to show when we open it up. Come around. So once again, imagine that there's latches on here. And then uh, when you lift it up, it's got several, several levels of several, you know, you can set it at different levels of, uh, you know, uh, angles. Yeah, right there. And uh, so you can put your, whatever you're drawing, painting, whatever sits right here. Uh, eventually we'll have a, we'll have a setup for a disc as well for animation. Um, then in here, come on over here. Uh, he's made these little boxes that slide out. You can use this as a pallet if you want. And these are, you know, these are for art supplies. 
and uh, brushes, pencils, whatever you want in there. And the other cool thing about this over here is this part, this piece right here is removable like that. So if you want more room to put your, your pad, uh, papers, all that kind of stuff, it sits right there. So that's pretty cool. I like that. But in the meantime, you just set this right here in place and you got, you can set this up. So, so it's a great little, I, I, I think they're great. And, uh, the old man's done a good job. You did a good job, old man. Thank you. Son. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things we're also talking about doing, um, is I'm, I'm each one will make individual, uh, it'll be unique cause I'll do a, a, a drawing, an original drawing on the front and seal it. Kind and like so, over there. yeah, just like this one. So this, that's the big one. That's the, that's the 24 by 36 inch. Uh, here you go, dad. Watch out. Cause that's not latched. Okay. So here's the giant one. This one's 24 by 36. This one does have the latches on it. So if you want to come over to the side, Dustin, here's the, here are the latches that pops up there, pops up there. It's got the original drawing on it. So I, I would do something like this on the other, on the, like uh, on the other one. And every, every box will have its own uh, drawing. And then just like that one, we've got, this one has four different settings. And then these two big boxes in here for supplies. And they're, and they're divided up. And on each side. So they're very cool. And once again, this is removable as well. And now we're, we're talking about also making a version of the big one where we have two supports on each side, leaving the middle open. And that will provide a desk if you want to do that, or a, a disc, I mean, that sort of thing. But um, it's very, very cool. We've had a lot of fun making them. Our Marshall's been cranking them. He's been, you've made what, four now? Yeah, I got four, three more ready. Yeah. And uh, support an old man. <laughs> and his dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Support an old man and his dad. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so they're pretty cool. I'm, 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 I'm really proud of the, of, of what he's done. I, Every time you, you make something, Dad, it, it always amazes me. Thank see that you. shelf back there? My bookshelf? He made that. He made that. You see all my stands my, you know, for, for all my equipment over there? He made that. <laughs> he makes everything. So it's pretty cool. So let us know if you're interested in these. We don't have a price point yet. There we go. I'm getting all tangled up here. But I wanted you to meet, oops, hold on, there you go. But, uh, but it's all, you know, the, the hardware is all really good hardware. And uh, they're really nicely put together. So leather handles. Uh, anyway, I just thought we'd show that and I wanted everyone to meet you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Say hi to that camera because that's who we're talking to now. Hi. We're switching back, <laughs> switching back to the... Uh... I never know where it is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's the uh, Aeronaut. Yeah, and, and if people do want to buy it, you can uh, probably put a logo on it. Yes, we're going to have our logo. Would, yeah, that they would like, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so um, I'm excited about them. I, I think these are really cool. Um, like I said, people had they suggested it. We took the suggestion. We ran with it, made some designs, and here we are. And uh, we had a, a little bit of trial and error, but the, you know we've got it simplified down. Uh, we might make a couple of more adjustments on some of the hardware, but other than that, this is basically you know what we're going to be offering if people are interested. So, yeah, I like it. I like it. Thank you. Buddy. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you much. See ya. See ya. Bye. Now go back to the shed and build some more. <laughs> So that's my old man. Mary says, oh, are those supposed to be like traveling easels or something? They're more like traveling drafting tables. Yeah. Or animation desk. It's just it was it was meant to be 
you know, the original idea, the original inspiration was for folks that don't necessarily have a dedicated art space in their house. This is something that you could set up on your kitchen table or something like that. You could have all your supplies in there and just open it up and you can work away and then you can close it all up and put it behind a, a dresser or something like that. But then as we designed them and they came together, we realized, wow, these are you know, nice for travel too. So uh, especially the small one. What did you use to draw the uh, mountain lion on the bigger one? I used a Bemoji uh, ink brush pen. So it's uh, it's India ink and um, and it's a brush pen. So And, uh, where and it's sealed. What's that? Uh, where are they going to be sold? They'll be on creatureartteacher.com. Once they're available. We'll make an announcement when they are. But let us know if they're if it's something you guys would be interested in. Uh, do you think uh, Marshall Code or whatever uh, make a wood carving course? Uh, yeah. We could probably do something like that. We can definitely do a <clears throat> woodworking course. <laughs> uh, someone wants to know, is there an estimated release date for them? Not yet. We don't, uh, we're getting close. We're still kind of working out a few kinks, right? I think is kind of the, but it's, it's in the very near future, I would say, right? Yeah. 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 yeah so, I mean, we're, next we're, couple of weeks. He, he's sure. actually going to be heading back north, uh, in about four weeks. And so we're just going to make a handful. We're going to make about five and offer them up and see how they, how, how people react to them. And then if there's a demand, then we'll make more. Sold out in the first five seconds. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. Aaron, I want to make an animated series on paper. Do you think that's possible? Um, it, it, hey, I mean, that's how we did it for 50 some odd or 70 some odd years. Yeah, you can do, you can do paper. Is it practical? It's not, it's not as practical, I would say, nowadays. But, um, but yeah, you definitely could do it for sure. So this shot is done as far as uh, animation goes. We are finished. And he pokes his head up over there and then it goes back and hides. So there you have it. So uh, this is going to be a short and sweet one. Um, but I want you guys to see kind of what we're doing with our production live streams. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new shot starting on Tuesday with the gang. And so uh, let's go. Let's actually let's go ahead and export this. How long did you study under Glenn Keane before you felt like you had a good grasp of animation? I, my, my entire time studying under him in my internship was only six weeks. But then I worked with him for over a year on Beauty and the Beast. And I worked with him for about a year on Pocahontas as well, or nine months on Pocahontas. Um, I think I finally, I, what I felt like I had a good grasp on animation was probably five years into my career. I mean, I, I was working as an animator a year into my career, but I struggled a lot. And, you know, nowadays, I'm a much better animator even now than when I left Disney 10 years ago or 13 years ago, actually. Holy cow. Um, I feel like I've grown as an animator even in that time. And so, um, you know, you're always looking to, to improve. Uh, but, I, you know, as far as having a good grasp on it, yeah, it was probably you know, a good three to five years before I felt like I was really, ap you know, a, a strong, strong. So I'm just waiting for it to export and then we're going to go back to the reel. I've turned off all the music, all the, the temporary score on the reel because it'll get flagged on YouTube. So we do have temporary score in here. Let me, uh, for those of you that are interested, I'm going to, should I just go ahead and play what we've done so far? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Can you? I'm just going to talk through it because I can't really play music. Oh, that's a good idea. I was wondering if you could export it full screen and then they could see the, but that's. Oh, it's going to take a while to export. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but. So again, while he's, uh, before he does this, I want to let you know if you've enjoyed this stream, Head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and look into becoming a member. Uh, you get twice weekly live streams uh, where we make Snow Bear every week. We do these public live streams the first Friday of every month. But we're there. We're here streaming multiple times a week over on our website, CreatureArtTeacher.com. You also get access to hundreds of hours of art education, not just from Aaron, from other uh 
<laughs> independent professionals as well, character designers, visual development artists, all kinds of stuff. And uh, you get thousands of brushes to keep and photo packs, artist reference packs. It really is the best deal in art education. So check it out, creatureartteacher.com. Become a member today. Keep and talking. And <laughs> if you're not interested in signing up for a membership, all of our courses can also be bought a la carte. So if you know if a membership isn't in the cards right now, hey, pick up a course on animation or pick up a course on photography or not photography, uh, Photoshop or digital painting. Um, we've got a course on photography coming soon from Dustin, as a matter of fact. Uh, we, were, we were actually discussing about it the other day. Yep. But head on over to creatureartteacher.com and start learning today. So I'm going to go, I'm going to, I decided to go ahead and export it. So I think it'll, it'll play back nicely. And I'm just exporting the first four minutes. So we're just going to talk a little bit. And uh, this will take about two minutes to export. So uh, it's actually going fairly quickly. Um, unless it's just rendering right now. Oh, it's rendering audio files. It's a lot faster than I anticipated. <laughs> yes. But uh, it's, yeah, it's always nice to show it full screen. But what we've done so far, uh, this is what I've done since July. So what we're going to show you. No, um, that's not 40 hours a week. No, it's not 40 hours a week. I've been doing a lot of other things. I got went off and did quite a few different things. Plus, I'm working on another project, another animation project. Uh, this is, says five minutes, so this will take a little bit. But... um. Well, uh, let's see. Slowing down the, uh, the OBS a little bit. You're starting a little bit on the camera, but oh, because it's exporting. Yeah, the the export is uh, is taking a lot of. Yeah, I was saying eight minutes. I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and play it on here. I got well, a question while you're figuring that out. Uh, yeah. What are companies looking for in animators? I know it's hard to respond to this question, but in your experience, what are the things they look for? Um, there's several different things. For, obviously, from an artistic standpoint, they want people that are going to really have great artistic chops that can uh, adjust styles, especially if you want to become a studio person um, and not just a, a per project person. Uh, they want uh, versatility in your art um, and just really great drawing, painting, draftsmanship, those types of skills, digital skills. Uh, you've got to have a good digital knowledge uh, of, of different programs. That really helps. Um, but then on top of all that, from uh, aside from the artistic side, you know, keep in mind that when you go into a studio uh, and uh, you're going into a group of people and you've got to have people skills, you've got to be able to um, work well with others, take criticism, make changes, uh, uh, you know, not be too precious with your work. I've seen a lot of younger people go in and they end up in that, that, that studio world and all of a sudden are completely crushed when they get notes on their work or they have to do something over and uh you you've got to accept the fact that that's uh, that's all part of the job i remember i had a shot in beauty and the beast i did it 13 times before i got it right and uh but i grew and i learned and, and that sort of thing so there's going to be that so it's the ability to work with others the ability to change um and grow and, uh, and then, you know, on top of all that, just having your good basic drawing and painting, drafting skills, good uh, knowledge of software, that sort of thing. There you go. So we've got a couple more minutes left on this. Uh, by the way, this is a YouTube comment. Disney is actually currently looking for 2D animators for their Vancouver studio, most likely to work on the upcoming Moana series for Disney+. Plus. Ah, Moana series is going to be 2D? I guess so. Wow, interesting. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. How many hours a day do you spend on snow bears? It's similar to the work that you did at Disney time-wise. Yes, it's very similar. Uh, Quality-wise, it's exactly the same. I'm trying to do exact Disney quality uh, animation. Um, the only difference is I'm not doing a, a separate cleanup pass, uh, but I'm animating very cleanly. Um, and when I'm actually working full-time on snow bear, uh, I'm, I'm working on it You know, eight hours a day, five days a week, so 35 to 40 hours a week. Um, but like I said, we've got other projects that we're working on. I've got another project that's actually taken uh, kind of over and is more of a priority that we're trying to get out the door. Uh, so I'm working most of my time on that. And then about six hours with each uh, live stream, we, each production live stream we do on Tuesday and Thursday, uh, I'm working about six hours a week on Snow Bear. So the shot that we just showed that I just finished, that uh, took me about, <laughs> about a month of six hours a week working away. Uh, any plans on seeing uh, the new Spider-Man movie? Yeah, I'd like to. I definitely would like to go see it. I've got some friends that worked on it, and uh, 
I'd love to love this. I, I like that that whole. It, it, to me, it's. It, I love how they're just redefining. It's it's different than anything else we've seen in animation. That that first one really changed things a lot, and uh, that's exciting to me. You know, thinking outside the 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 Disney box and whatever it might be, and just coming up with something new. And that's what I think. That's what gets me excited about animation nowadays, because I think there's so much more opportunity out there for expression uh, through animation. Um, because of all the different platforms and, and, and the, the cost of creating these films is coming down. I think we're going to see a lot more experimentation and, uh, and expressiveness through animation, which, which I think is really cool and exciting. Have uh, you ever animated in 3D before or thought about trying it? You know, I thought about trying it and I started to learn. Of course, I was trying to learn it while I was directing a movie, so it didn't work very well because uh, I just didn't have the time and I never went back to it. Um, to be completely honest, I'm not super interested in working in 3D as much as I am working 2D. There's something about flat 2D animation coming from my hands directly that, uh, you know, and, and I love to draw. That's that's the thing. I just absolutely love to draw. So that for me is, that's what I'm going to be doing for forever. But this is exported. Uh, in case I want to be a storyboard artist, what is your suggestion? Uh, in like, uh... Understand cinema, understand cutting, understand staging, understand character drawing. You know, one of the things about storyboarding is that it involves so many disciplines. And you, and you, my argument a lot of times is that the story artist has to be one of the best artists on the crew because you really do need to understand all of these different things. Layout. If you understand animation, then you can you can control the eye. You, you know, with just a few boards, you can create what feels like movement. Um, understanding acting, all of these things are super important when it comes to storyboarding, cutting, staging, all of that, composition. Uh, but anyway, this is what we've done so far on Snow Bear. There's, there's going to be a lot of little holes in here, uh, here and there, but you'll see um, uh, this is what we've got. There's, we've got about twice as much left to do, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, but you'll get a sense of it, and if you like it, come on over and, and join us. It has sound. Are you meaning to have the sound? I, I took the uh, music out. I, just, I took the music out, yeah. Take me out of the corner, Dustin. So this whole, this whole thing is based on, uh, the environment is based on Baffin Island, which is up in the Arctic north of Canada, between Canada and Greenland. Once again, keep in mind also that this will have score. It'll have music. It's just right now the temporary music that I have in there will get tagged on YouTube and uh, we'll have to take it down. Tag, you're it. But the whole idea here is he's, he's looking for a friend, but they just seem to be scared of him. That's the only thing about our member streams because they're not public. We can play music and do all things. Oh, yeah, you guys get to listen to what I listen to. <laughs> You listen to my playlist. There's some Phil Collins, some Seal, Cab Mo. <laughs> Martin Berger uh, joke saying everything you saw would be redrawn. Yes. Thanks. This is all drawn one drawing at a time. One drawing at a time. We're one doing this drawing since July. at a time. How do you spell the island's name? Baffin, B-A-F-F-I-N. As I tune said, I used to live in northern Nanook, Canada. You got the environment down phenomenally. Oh, thank you. And we did a lot of research on Baffin. We were hoping to get up there. We haven't done that yet. But yeah.
Yes, I'm doing all my own effects too. I'm not a great effects animator, but I figured I'd give it a shot. And yeah, we have done a lot. <laughs> We've gotten a lot done. This uh, the the overlay elements will be redone on that shot. Once again, this is all TV paint. Will you do a foley track too? Yes, we will. Yes. This is going to be professionally mastered, scored, music, original music composed for it, working with the composer. The yes. It plays a lot better with music. <laughs> no, not yet. Hey, there's our shot we just did today. Yeah, this is just to give you a taste of what our streams are like twice a week. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed it and you can, you know, join us. It's a lot of fun. We're going to stop it there? Yeah, I, I, I played it through right to the end of the shot. I'm a vegetarian. Yeah. And it's right. Right there. Boom. Well, everybody, we hope you enjoyed it. That's it. Uh, That's it. If you're interested in learning more, head on over to FutureArtTeacher.com and become a member. Uh, also, don't forget, on Saturday, July 15th, we have a watercolor workshop over at uh, FutureArtTeacher.com. It's going to be a full day of watercolor painting. You can learn more if you go to FutureArtTeacher.com slash live. And uh, spots are limited for that. And if you are a member, it's included for free, or you can purchase a ticket out of front. If you do register, you also get to rewatch it at any time, but only if you pre-register. So make sure you sign up as soon as you can, because once the spots are gone, they're all gone and you can't buy it after the fact. And then finally, I want to remind people uh, that on next Thursday, June 8th, we are launching our Discord server. Uh, it's available to members of Preacher Our Teacher. Uh, and if you head on over to preacherourteacher.com slash portfolio, you can submit your portfolio. And basically, you'll be able to uh, go ahead and upload uh, your art or a reel or your website, what have you. And Aaron will pick out a few of them. And we're going to have that as our launch party on June 8th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time when we launch our brand new Discord channel. So if you're a member, you'll be hearing more about that very soon. And if you're not a member, sign up today. Reach out to All right, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today. It was a lot of fun. And uh, like we said, if you're interested in continuing to see us make this, then come on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and uh, become a member and join us. And also, let us know how you feel about these drawing boards. Uh, you'd like to, we want to know if we, if we should be making more. Yes, I need one. I need one. Oh, great, great. Well, I'm we glad you guys one. like them then. Because uh, they're, fun, they're fun to make. They're a lot of fun to make. And uh, we'd love to get them out to you guys. And, uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to personalizing every single one of them. So anyway, until next month, uh that first friday of july or next week if you're or here. next week if you remember on tuesday one month um, go on now. out there and have a safe weekend have a great rest of your week and uh put some beauty back into the world be an artist change someone's perspective and uh do some good all right so i will talk to you guys later hopefully i'll see you on tuesday if not i'll see you first friday next month take it easy you guys bye bye Lowest price ever on memberships <laughs> cowboy bebop <laughs>